Hello everyone and welcome to another video. The lands between is home to dozens upon dozens of demigods, that is no surprise. A few months ago we talked about Bok and his correlation to the demigods, and in today's video we are talking about another and their correlation. Kenneth Heights of his Fort of Heights. He's known as the true ruler of Limgrave, which we know currently Godric seems to possess. But why? How? How is his correlation to the rightful place upon the throne of Limgrave? How is he the rightful ruler? Well, in today's video, we will be getting into that and his connections to the demigods and his possible heritage. If you do enjoy the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. And without further ado, I'll let you get on to the video. Kenneth Height is quite a pompous and confusing character. His ego and pride sort of clouds us from learning really much about him. He acts as if we should already know him as the rightful ruler of Limgrave. Talks about his fort like it's some monumental place in the world. And perhaps it is in the rights of Limgrave. But who? is Kenneth Height. Who is the Height name? What significance does it have to the lands between and how is he the ruler of Limgrave? Well our first clue is in fact on the banners outside of Fort Height. We can actually see the Golden Order's insignia which further links him to the Golden Order and their rule of gold. And considering everything we've talked about and we are going to talk about it even adds more credibility to him being a demigod. It tells us that he is a part of that order, and not to mention how he literally credits and calls himself part of that golden order. Talking about true order, and the true order of gold, which is the golden order's rule. He is a devout follower of the golden order. I find it quite surprising that after we know the primordial Elden Ring is a lot bigger and there are a lot more demigods we don't know about. Even knowing this, when Morgoth calls out the demigods, he lists off the ones we know as the Shardbearers, right? But he doesn't talk about the other demigods. Perhaps some of these demigods followed the rule of the technically oldest demigod who has the most strongest claim to the Golden Order. Perhaps that's why in spite of everything going on in Limgrave, Kenneth Height still follows his liege lord. There's also the fact that the colour patterns on the actual banners are the same ones used inside of Stormvale and around Limgrave. Maybe these soldiers have been forced into servitude. Perhaps some of these soldiers aren't even Godricks, but ones that have been enslaved. We really don't know, but I am very curious and I hope we do get some information in the DLC. Although that's very unlikely. Something that also leans into the aspect and theory that Kenneth Height is in fact a demigod, or at least in some correlation to them, would be the fact that he somehow has an alliance with the demi-humans, which he says after we capture back his fort. Now, this is very interesting because there does exist an alliance between the Academy of Rhea Lucaria and the Demi-Humans, and most likely with the Golden Order as well. If he is the ruler of Limgrave and he is a demigod, surely, surely these Demi-Humans which are allianced with Rhea Lucaria and the demigods and Marika and the Golden Order, surely, surely they would listen to him. And from his words, they do. For when we actually arrive back at Castle Height, after giving him enough time to have reached there, the Demi-Humans stand guard. We can see this by the fact that on the way up to Castle Height, and actually inside, and the path to Kenneth, it's guarded by Demi-Humans. There's Demi-Humans everywhere, and there's no way that he could have got there, unless he's got some secret R secret passage through the walls. There's no way he could have got there without the Demi-Humans seeing him. This also once more links in with one, the pact that we hear so much about, and two, the fact that after we talk to him in Castle Heights, he directly states that he's going to go talk to the Demi-Humans because, because they listen to him. 
but why would they listen to him? Maybe it's because he's a demigod and directly aligned with the Golden Order. A Golden Order that hopefully would one day rise once more to fame. And, hell, if Marika somehow made her way back, somehow made her way to the front of the Golden Order, hell, any of the demigods to the front of the Golden Order and brought it to its former glory, they certainly would not want to be on the end of that wrath. So they go along with Kenneth Height, they follow his lead, as they probably have done for hundreds of years. You've got to remember, demigods and the gods are very, very old. These demigods would have seen generations upon generations upon generations of these demi-humans. They followed them for hundreds of years. Why stop now? And considering what we just talked about, about the Golden Order's wrath, they stand in devotion to Kenneth Height and the Golden Order. Whether this loyalty is out of fear or true loyalty is unknown. And it doesn't really matter because they are standing silent and they stand there protecting Kenneth Height as he celebrates the reclaiming of his fort. In my opinion, the fear is truly shown when you consider that the demi-humans since the Shattering have been left to go rampant around Limgrave and allowing the lands between. Kenneth Height, with a few words, has sent them back into his servitude, which I find tells you a lot about his character and what he stands for and perhaps what he is. Another thing that is truly, truly important when it comes to this discussion is where is he descended from if he is a demigod? Now, it might pop up to you that maybe it's Godfrey, and that is completely fine, but I also do think there's a very high chance it could be from Godwin. Now, we know that that golden hair that Kenneth Height has is very interlinked with Marika. Most of her descendants, at least coming from Godwin's line, do have that golden hair. Now, if he believes he's the rightful ruler to Limgrave, he would need some kind of direct claim, right? There's tons of people that we know of. The Scions, for example, their descendants, they are directly stated as part of the golden lineage. So surely, if Kenneth Height was just some any ordinary member of this bloodline, surely the Scions would also have a claim to Limgrave. But they don't. They really don't. So why is Kenneth Height special? Or well, maybe he's a direct descendant. Like I said, maybe Godwin got a little, uh, let his uh, snake out a little bit and uh, Kenneth Height's bloodline was born. Perhaps he's not immortal. Perhaps this fort has been passed down through Godwin's bastard child, down and down and down. Alternatively, he's not a bastard. He had some kind of wife or mistress that he married we really don't know. You can really go in circles with how this bloodline was born. But I do believe that there is something special about Kenneth Height's bloodline that we don't fully comprehend or know. Maybe the people inside the Lands Between or the people who live inside Limgrave do know because he is their quote-unquote rightful ruler. But we, outsiders tarnished, we don't know. We're not privy to this information. Going back onto a previous point, he could be a descendant from Godfrey. We know Nefeli is, and there probably is quite a few others considering Godfrey in his prime was quite a warrior. But I feel considering he's genuinely got a fort and everything, I feel like there'd be some kind of documentation about this. Unless perhaps he is a bastard, just like Nefeli. Or at least, as far as we know Nefeli is, perhaps Godfrey had another wife after Marika in the Badlands. Who knows, but I personally like the Godwin theory a lot more. Being devil's advocate though, perhaps, perhaps somehow Kenneth Height is somehow related to the Storm King. There's no evidence of this, but perhaps maybe when they captured his fort, his descendants still lived. That descendant being Kenneth Height. The buildings are very old, but that could also be because the Golden Order is also very old. I really didn't want to leave that outside the video, and I wouldn't have done because even if not talking about that would preface my point even more. I only want to spread what I think is true or could be true or theories or anything. I don't want to spread misinformation. So I did want to just say that because this whole video could be turned on its head if he is somehow descended from the Storm King. And that's perfectly okay. 
I think there is a chance that he could be descended, but I also think, personally, that the Godwin theory is a lot more likely, at least in my eyes. Please, in the comments, by all means, let me know what you think, as I am eager and eager and eager and very, very bloody eager to hear what you all think, as some of your comments just blow me away. Sometimes you just straight up debunk the whole video, and I'm just like... I just want to pat you on the bloody back. I swear, some of your comments are just absolutely incredible. You inform me of things that I might have gotten wrong, and I truly appreciate that above everything. Another thing that needs to be talked about would be, why does Kenneth Hyde give up his right to rule Limgrave? Just why? To me, it's quite obvious. He's embarrassed. He's been completely and utterly undermined, being defeated by such weak adversaries, which we, at base level, can defeat quite easily. It's an embarrassment to the rule of gold, to the order of gold. So he gives it up. His rule having been undermined, he tries to find a new ruler, one of the proper lineage that he is from as well. That person ended up being the Feli Lu, who would go on to lead Limgrave to hope for prosperity in the years and centuries after the events of Elden Ring. Sadly everyone, that is the end of the video. If you did enjoy, please consider leaving a like and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Really enjoyed making this one. I always love the videos where we theorise and we go all into the strange and unknown to do with Elden Ring as that's really what's so special about From Software to me. I really hope you all did enjoy this one. I won't hold you any longer. And yeah, may you find your worth in the waking world. Goodbye, everyone.